There are times when you're looking at relationships like parents having children that when you're on the parent record, like where we are right now, you want to be able to see a list of all the children. Now, the traditional relationship with QuickBase is that you get a report link because you never know how many children they're going to have. Um, but still, that doesn't uh, inhibit people from desiring to see, like, say, all the children or all the tasks. If you were using a projects and tasks paradigm, you'd see all the tasks. So how do we make all, all of that happen? Um, well, it ends up that you have to create a relationship for all of the records that are listed here. If you've got 10 records, then you've got to set up 10 relationships. Uh, you've got to set up summary reports or summary fields, which tell you which one of the, which tells you the identity of the child record, the record ID. And then you have to pass them down and you have to compare them and then do reverse relationships to display the child information back on the parent. And so let's uh, go take a look at David. He's got eight children here. Um, and th here, here they are in a regular table that you might see. Now, I might say that a lot of people will say, well, very first thing, why are you doing this summary at the top? Because you want to. Um, the other solution is, is for you to go down into the child, which lists them all, and then group them by the parents, and you have the same kind of information. Any of the information you wanted from the parent would be rolled down, but this is very detailed and it produces many rows and people uh, like to be able to summarize their uh, child records up and this is one way to be able to do this. So let's go again, look at David Crane's record. Um, as we look at these uh, records, they're displayed as you might expect. This is the section uh, that is put here to show you how all this happens. Now, every single time I create a child, I need to find out what that child's record is so that I can do a reverse relationship and display it here. So what I've got is a whole bunch of relationships bringing back, reporting the individual names of the people in here. Um, the first thing we ought to do is figure out, well, how did we get these numbers here? to know how the reverse relationship was going to take and give me the correct record ID in a sequence so that I can bring down their related uh, names. So let's go look at the relationship that sits between parents and child. Well, there are nine of them. Uh, that's because the original relationship of parent and child uh, is setting up the summary and the lookup fields and then we are then reversing it and sending the child information back into the parent for each one of the eight relationships that we've talked about. And in this situation, it'll be Joan, John, Mark, Kirk, Stewart, Cindy, Susan, Scott, just like that. So let's look at that very first relationship. So once the relationship is created, you then start to say, well, I want to add a summary field where the minimum record ID, um, and let's, I'm going to recreate this very first one so you see what I'm doing. I would like to see the minimum of the record ID. Now that means out of all the children, this is going to be the lowest level of record identifier here. And so I'll, I'll create that and that will create this, this very first one here. It'll ask me for the name and I'll do it. And this is what it looks like afterwards. I'll go back into it. So we are saying I want the record ID I want the minimum of the record ID. So that's the very first one. Um, let's look at the uh, second one. I'm going to go back into the relationship. And so that's the, um, excuse me, this is that first one. Now let's look at the second, because I've got to create one of these for every single child that I have. And if I've got an unlimited number of these, this breaks down and you have to accommodate, let's say, what, 100? I mean, it would be very physical. So usually people are thinking, well, they're, they're second guessing their original thought that this was a good idea. They have a thousand records. Okay, you got to do a thousand of these. So I'm going to go into uh, second. All right, the second one is saying, I want to know the record ID. I want the record ID of where the record ID of that task is greater than the parent's minimum, this is the very first one. Now where did this come from? 
and I neglected to uh, um, show you that when I brought up the first and I got this number, I had to take and pass it back down and there it is right there, the first. And when I did the second, I rolled the second up, I had to pass the second down so that it was available here because I needed to say I want the next number. And every single one of these will, will show you that the uh, where the record ID is greater than the first number and then this the the next one will say the second number and the next and it's building on each other so that it will only take that incremental next record well all of those end up coming back to the uh, record down here and they're listed right here now you have to create a relationship and insert this value into the reference field so that it will automatically pull down the name of that person that you wanted to for the first record, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So now that you've got all of these on your parent record, they don't look like a CSV and we have to right click and create a formula text field to concatenate or merge all the information together. And, and if you want a comma, this is the comma and a space after each one of the names, you'll want to use this list function. And the place you find out about list functions are, let's go down here and look for list. And here's the list right here. Down below here is a, kind of an example of what we're just doing. Only we're doing name one, name two, name three, name four, and it just keeps going on and on and on and on. Uh, so, so, so that is a way of using summary fields to look between the two tables, bring the number up, bring the number back down, let it look and summarize it compared to the, that number and the new number and the new number. Pretty soon you have all of the eight children up here but now you have to concatenate them and you put them in that formula text field and use that list function to um, provide them with a um, comma. And uh, this is the end result.